How many friends have you made today? Really, really? Anon, please! Celestia whines in a very unprincessy manner. Anon is holding tight to the door handle on his house. Celestia is quite literally trying to pull him away with her magic, but his grip is surprisingly strong, and Celestia doesn't really wish to hurt him. Still, it doesn't stop her from trying to pry him off, though. I said no! He shouts loud enough for all of Ponyville to hear him. Good thing he's so far out of town. Now, you're probably a little confused as to what's happening right now. It's easy to explain, actually. So, a few weeks ago, Anon finally accepted the fact that Celestia had become one of his friends. Once that little revelation happened, Celestia decided to spend more time with Anon in more friend-like activities, such as going to the park, bowling, and even having lunch together. Anon was skeptical at the time, but would have been lying if he didn't admit that he enjoyed his time with her. They've grown close, and Anon does like how lively Celestia can be. One moment she has all the wisdom in the world, and then the next she's stuffing her face with a cake that's almost half of her body size. Anon also gets a kick out of how the other ponies react when they see them together. Anon, the antisocial human, and their lovely matriarch. So, little by little, Celestia showed Anon around Ponyville and even took him through the Everfree to see the castle of the two sisters. What Celestia found the most interesting is that Anon never showed much concern when they walked through the forest that day, telling Celestia that the Everfree reminded him of home. She knew that deep down, Anon bottled up his emotions, and that isn't healthy for any pony. So, she dedicated herself to being the bestest friend a pony could be. So, how has Celestia been faring with this friendship, you may ask? Well, to be honest, she's loving every moment of it. She's so used to having to act like a princess all around her little ponies, and she's longed for a day just like this. To just have a friend that looks at her and doesn't bow. One that greets her with a hug, albeit a little hesitant, but still, far better than she ever got from other ponies. With the exception of her sister, of course. But yes, she feels a great sense of ease knowing that Anon is her friend. Though, back to the present, she silently resents him. They've been talking about this trip for the past few days, and she told him that it was going to happen, and now he's trying to claw his way back into his home. Anon, stop it! Celestia says with irritation. No! Anon squirms around in Celestia's magic. Anon, please do this for me! We've been all over Ponyville, and I want you to see the castle! Again, that whining voice. You thought Rarity had a whining voice? Yeah, you hadn't heard nothing until you heard Celestia do it. A thousand years of practice. Anon can handle it, though. He had to put up with Luna before she had her morning coffee. Now that? That could have been considered hell on Earth. Why couldn't we just stay here? He screams out. Because I want you to see the castle, to see my room, maybe even Luna's. His grip falls at that and he slams his face first into the dirt. Celestia lets go of his lower half that was wrapped in her magic, and he quickly turns around to face her. Oh, hell no! I am not going to see Luna until I know she's fully awake. Celestia smiles in triumph. Well, it's good to hear that you agree, Anon. Anon's eyes widen as he replays the exact words that he said. No, wait! I can't believe that you hit me in the head with a rock, Anon says as he rubs the back of his head. I told you I didn't do that, Celestia says with a sigh. Pinky came out of nowhere and hit you with it. She said something about moving the story forward, but she disappeared before I could stop her. Anon is feeling a little groggy. It felt like he took a boulder to the back of his head, which is kind of funny because the rock actually was boulder. Pinky then put the rock in a box and sent it to her sister Maud, but that isn't what the story's about. Currently, Anon and Celestia are sitting on a train waiting for it to arrive at Canterlot. <sighs> so why are we on a train anyways? Anon asks. Celestia is sitting next to Anon, and she has the window seat as he took the aisle. She looks over to Anon with a smile and uses a wing to pull him to her side. I enjoy the time that we share on, whether it would be having lunch or taking a train. I must admit, it has been a long time since I took the train. Anon looks up and watches Celestia as she looks out the window. He finds it rather odd how his friends can take joy in such simple activities. He knows that her life as a princess is hard, and so much is expected of her, but 
Does she really not get out that much? So, uh, how long ago would that be? He asks to break the silence. Her smile slips some, an action that doesn't go unnoticed by Anon. Many, many years. Her smile returns as she pulls him closer to her barrel, never turning from the view that passes her by. It's good to have a friend that enjoys it with me. Anon can say many things about the situation right now. The word that stands out in his mind the most is... Comfortable. Right now, Anon is pressed firmly to Celestia's chest as she holds him with her wing. His wants to protest is slowly draining with the soft rocking of the train, the steady and powerful breaths that Celestia takes, and the silkiness of her fur and wings. Celestia can feel her smile grow a little more as she hears the soft snoring of Anon. She pulls him closer, and she leans her head against the window. She's... She's never felt so comfortable around any other creature in her life. She allows her eyes to fall closed as she rests alongside her friend. Next up, Canterlot! Both Anon and Celestia jump from their positions in shock. They look around, bleary-eyed, until they face each other. Celestia then removes her wing that's still wrapped around Anon. They both face away from each other for a bit, but they soon regain their composure. So they took a nap together, no biggie. We should probably depart. Celestia speaks. Anon nods. Makes sense. He gets up from his seat and points to a few bags that he assumed were his. So she- In a flash, they were gone. Anon looks to Celestia as she gives him her usual smile. They'll be awaiting for your arrival. She quickly trots past him as he shakes his head some in bemusement. Anon and Celestia walk out of the train and look around a bit. Anon must admit that seeing these ponies gawk at their princess using a train is rather enjoyable for him. Celestia, on the other hand, never shows a change in her demeanor, making it seem like she had done this a thousand times. Anon takes his place by her side as she walks towards the streets. Well, this place is rather fancy. Anon says, as they walk the streets of Canterlot, a small regiment of guards surrounding them. Eh, could lose the guards, though. They're here for our protection. Celestia answered in her princess voice. Anon knows what she's doing. She's wearing her princess mask. It's something that he rarely sees in private, and only a little while in Ponyville. Even with her mask on, he can see how she wants to dismiss her guards or to walk into that cake shop that they just passed. Do you mind if we stop for a moment? Anon asks. Celestia looks to him with a raised brow. Very well. What is it that you require? He shrugs. Not much. Just wait here. Celestia gives him a nod and watches as he walks off towards the cake shop that she has been dying to visit. Anon walks into the shop and quickly finds a young-looking mare behind the counter. The mare sees him and can't help but feel a bit flustered. A few moments ago, she watched from the window as this creature walked alongside the princess. So, he must be someone very important. Oh, uh, hi there. How may I help you? She stutters in fright. Anon looks around a little until he spots what he was looking for. He points to the chocolate cake. Two of those, he says neutrally. Two slices? She asks nervously. No, the entire cake. In all of her time working at the shop, Frosty had never seen a pony order that much cake before. Are you sure, sir? That's a lot of sugar. She warns. I won't be eating it alone, he answers. She gives him a nod and goes to get his order ready. Anon is happy to know that they have more than a few of them already made in the back. He quickly grabs his bag of cakes, pays the mare, and is out the door in less than ten minutes. Celestia finds her gaze moving towards the rather large bag that Anon is carrying. What did you buy? She asks. He shrugs again. No, oh, it's just something that we can enjoy while we have our tea. Celestia wanted to take Anon into a hug at this very moment. If you want to make Celestia a friend for life, remember one simple thing. She loves cake. She can feel her usual motherly princess smile starting to crack at the seams. She needs to get to the castle quickly. Very well. I will inform the staff to ready my sitting room. With that said, the two of them continued on. That will be all, thank you. Celestia gives thanks to the maid that brought them their tea. Celestia quickly closes the door to her private sitting room, though it mostly functions as a place where she can eat all the sweets that she wants in peace. A pony almost got a picture of her stuffing her face in a cake. Thanks to this room, though, she would never need to worry. Anana is done setting down the boxes on the table. 
he pours both of them a glass of tea and waits patiently for Celestia to send the staff away. Once the door was closed, Celestia practically giggles like a schoolgirl as she flies over to her seat and pulls one of the boxes close to her. Oh, Anon, I have been waiting for this all day. Her mouth is watering a good amount as she looks upon the beautifully crafted cake. Well, don't just look at it. Anon chuckles a bit. While the situation at hand may seem normal for the two of them, it wasn't really the same thing outside. The two guards that are standing outside the door can't help but eavesdrop a little, and from their perspectives, things are getting rather... raunchy. Come here, my little sweetie. The two guards shift uncontrollably as they hear their leader speak. Will you stop that? You're dripping everywhere! They hear the human scream. Oh, but I can't help it! I've been dreaming about this for a long time! The two guards look at each other. Should we really be standing here? One asks the other. I don't know! I don't remember training for a situation like this! The other yells in a whisper. The one from before stomps a single hoof, which is kind of like a finger snap to a human. I got it! He turns to his partner. We guard each end of the hall. We can't have ponies come walking by and hearing this, yet we'll also be too far to hear it ourselves. The other pony looks at her partner with a sneer that turns to a wide grin suddenly. Genius! The two ponies quickly leave in opposite directions as they guard the ends of the hallway. Back inside the room, Manon just shakes his head in amusement as he looks to Celestia. She's stretched out on her seat, chocolate covering her entire muzzle while she gently rubs the sizable bulge of her tummy, giving small groans every so often. Well, at least she's smiling now. I... Uh, I think I ate too much. She speaks in a labored breath. Anon looks down to see two empty boxes. I can agree to that. He takes a sip of tea. She looks down to what she's done. I... I'm sorry, Anon. You didn't get any. She looks like she was about to cry. Celestia tends to get really emotional after eating too many sweets. Anon just waves it off. Well, I bought them for you. Wait, really? She asks, and he nods. Really? When I saw your eye flicker over to the store, I instantly knew why. She lets out a sigh of content as she continues to rub her belly. <sighs> you know me well, Anon. He nods some. <laughs> that I do. You know, it never ends between the adorableness that Anon and Celestia share together. It's irresistible. It really is. Now let's get on to our harmonious donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and Pony Man. Courier Crucii, Delta Omega, Strix, Rune Scythe9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sir Brother and Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Huzar, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Tilka Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, and Raven Speedster. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Live life to the fullest, and go ahead and, you know what, eat some cake.